I went to my brother with a wild idea. What if we hiked the out route together? 180 kilometers long, the trek winds over the Swiss Alps from Chamonix to Zermatt, Switzerland. He was completely on board. So, after several months of flight hunting and planning, we finally pulled the trigger on our tickets and made our final arrangements. My name is Brandon Newbert. I'm a fine art landscape photographer, outdoorsman, and full-time systems engineer. And this is my brother Nathaniel, a cross-country athlete, avid cyclist, and mathematical genius studying medical research at BYU. Together, we packed up our things and headed to Switzerland. This was our adventure. First official morning of the trip. We've made it out here and it's great. I really like what I have here as I've got the uh, we've got the river sweeping down underneath and these flower boxes right in here with the mountains and the sunshine hitting the peaks. So this is a pretty fun composition here. So today's plan is a nine kilometer walk from Chamonix, Mont Blanc, up to Argentière to the northeast. And it should just be a beautiful nine kilometer walk on a pretty flat trail. A good way to get started, I think. So, this is also a good way to get started. This is a great way there to get started. There's so much butter in this thing, it's amazing. Oh, there's so much chocolate in this thing, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, after sunrise, we went to take a nap until about nine. And I woke up at 11. So now we're gonna walk down into town and have lunch and read our guidebook to see where exactly it is we need to be going. So, sound like a plan? Yeah, Here day we, one. Chamonix to Argentina. Well, Nathan, we're finally started. Yeah, finally. <laughs> finally started. Feels like it's taken forever. An eight hour flight. A 24 hour delay. Two hour delay for a one hour flight. Bus trip, to, bus Chamonix. trip to Chamonix. And then the rest of the day in Chamonix, which was good. 12 hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I we think were we so needed tired. It. Yeah, we did need it. I think we got. beyond those mountains there. We hiked past those. Now we're at these mountains here. We've hiked past those. And now we're going to arrive in the valley of those mountains over there. That's fun.
Rain let up for a little bit, so here we go. Getting started. Time to just get going. Yeah. Day two begins in Argentière with a gradual ascent through the valley toward the French ski village of Latour. From Latour, we begin our ascent up 800 meters over the Col de Balm, where we cross from France into Switzerland. We then made our way east toward Ref le Grand, past the Glacier du Grand and the Glacier de Trent. Then, traversing the mountain, we headed toward our final stop, Col de la Fauclaz, where we were just in time for a late supper. Of the mist keeps us wet, you know, and humid, but not soaking wet, so. So from here we're going to climb up this mountain, about a thousand, thousand two hundred feet up to Chamillon. And then we just gotta make all the way up to the place where I can't even reach with my finger, the Col de Balm. I can't tell you how tempting this is. Anything <laughs> more crazy. Yeah, that's alright though. The good news is that uh, it's not raining on us, but we're hopeful that by the time we get to the top that uh, we'll have hiked up and out of it. Recording. Well, we finished the climb. So we've just crossed over into Switzerland. Woo we will now be in Switzerland for the remainder of the trip. All the clouds have gone above us and we can see more than 40 meters. It feels yep. good. Yeah, visibility is much, much better. Very, very cool. We're in a good spot right now. These are the best times to talk about what we're doing. So what are we doing? We are running to eat food. We have gone 20 kilometers. Pretty astonishing considering that this was supposed to be a 15 kilometer hike. But uh, we haven't been videoing very much recently just because we've been trying to go, go, go. I had to call our place and ask them to hold our dinner for us. A couple months ago, we were looking at this on Google Maps. Now we're actually seeing it. That's pretty cool.
We started day three from the Col de la Forclaz, retracking our previous path traversing the mountain. After entering the canyon, we began the 1400 meter ascent along the Glacier de Trent to the top of the Fenêtre d'Arpette, where the views were stunning and well worth our efforts. Our initial descent down the other side was steep and challenging, but eventually smoothed itself out as we entered the fields and meadows once more. As we entered the woods, it began to rain as we finally reached our destination, the quaint town of Champé. Out. We can see over most of the mountains in this area. All the way from this glacier to the lake. Wow, we are freaking high. barely finished climbing up La Fenetra d'Arlet. And uh, it's super high, it was really high up, but we did it and it was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're ready for the descent. This is kind of hilarious. It's pouring rain now. And the first thing Brandon does once it starts pouring is pour out his camera and start doing a shot. 
normal people want to get where they're going as fast as possible right now. No. We want the story. Or at least Brandon wants the video to go along with it. <laughs> Ready to do this, Nathan? Oh yeah, off to Le Chablais in the rain. Fortunately, our shoes were already wet, so they're not gonna get any wetter. Where are you gonna go? Yeah, we're just gonna go for it. It's a shorter day today, though, so it's in the rain, but it's not all day, and we're not summiting anything, so it's gonna be okay. At least we don't plan on summiting anything. We don't plan on summiting anything. <laughs> if we do, we got lost. So off we go. Day four is a short day, leading us from the lake village of Champé, north through the valley, to Sembranche. On our way to Sembranche, we were lost and stuck backtracking for about two hours. Eventually, though, we found our way west and toward our destination, Le Chablais. You have enough water for the trip? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Pure we're gonna die! To keep going and hope for the best. So we're gonna get wet and that's just the way it goes. Rain's starting to let up a little bit. We we'll hope it continues to do so. Down the track we go. Here's the finish line. Oh man, it's been, it's been a serious walk.
Yesterday was supposed to be a rest day, but turned from uh, 13 kilometers into 19 kilometers and was pretty brutal walking in the rain. I spent all last night before bed rubbing out my IT band on my left leg. So today should have been a nine kilometer hike up 5,000 feet of elevation gain. And that's just not something that my leg would be able to handle. So we found out that uh, our stay at the Cabane de Montfort would give us a free all day pass on these lifts. And so I decided to take a rest day. And then we learned, well, we can take the lift all the way up to the top of Montfort. Yeah. So we're going to go all the way up to the very pinnacle of the mountain and do that. Um, that's how we're going to spend our day today is a real rest day where I can give my leg a chance to recover. I'll wrap it up more this evening. We'll just go from there. So, And we get a chance to ride a Swiss ski lift. We just carry on. I don't, think I, I don't think I could have picked a better day to have an IT band issue. I wouldn't have been able to do the hike, and so the fact that we can do this, it's better, so. Up, up, up the stairs we go. It's hard to even see the lift that we took up here. One last step to the summit. Very top. Yep. Got a beautiful view back here at Mont Blanc. I've been shooting a panorama, zoomed all the way in at 100 millimeters. It's beautiful. Couldn't have asked for a clearer sunrise. Perfectly clear day. Really great first light. Very good conditions. Six begins at the Cabane de Montfort. We'll hike over three coals today. Hiking south along the stunning views of the Sentier de Chamois, we first cross over the Col Tamine. Our course then turns northeast and traverses a valley, eventually bringing us to the Col de Lulu. Descending into the Grand Dessert Glacier, we made our path east and to our final col, the Col de Profleury, where we make our final descent to our destination, the Cabane de Profleury.
far today? Yeah. Feeling good? How are you feeling, Nathan? I feel just fine. We haven't reached any significantly difficult spots. We're mostly just traversing the mountain. I can't tell you enough about the scenery and how spectacular it is. I couldn't even stand it when we came across the top of the coal as we traversed the mountain. I saw some tears flowing there. I did cry. It's just amazing up here. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. I'm trying to keep a good balance between speed and enjoying this view. It's spectacular. This is a good place for that picture. Nathan, Nathan, should we go? I'm just tired of walking away from stuff like that. I know, it's, it's killing me. <laughs> Look at that. It's not fair. No. It helps me look stronger when I'm in front. <laughs> Here we go, reaching the top. Now the last pull, pull the loop. 29, 21 meters. Woo! Looks like the last one, Cold of Profleury, is about two hours away. Three hours if we eat lunch. We're eating lunch. We're eating lunch. Now descending through snow. Oh crap. Where do we go? You know what? My instincts tell me that we need to go that way. If only we had some indicator. You know what? We're just gonna have to do what I think that we have to do. A bit like walking through Mordor. There's nothing here. No sign of intelligent life in front of me. What kind of thing is that? <laughs> <laughs> the only way. Nicely done. Woo! Nice work, Woo. unscathed. Now we've got to make our way to that distant mark. Way up there, and then we've got to go around this mountain and then down to the Cabane de Profleury. Nathan just discovered that that up there is where we were yesterday. That is the very top of We're done, so we're here, and it was a beautiful day. Some really unique country that we went through, so now we have a short hike tomorrow. We'll carry on from there, so it's been a great trip so far. So we lucked out, and we just came to Cabin Prafuri and asked for two beds, and they gave us two beds. Been able to shower, we've had a good meal, and now we can just... Good ending to a good day today. Good day. So today's gonna be really easy. We're just gonna go up that hill over there, down the other side, and have a little walk alongside a lake. Nice lakeside views, all the way walking over to Cabane de Dine, just up the little hill. 
And that's it for today. Yeah. About four hours. Good and actual rest day. Cabane de D, only four hours and 15 minutes walk. Nice and easy. That's pretty. Silence all around is feeding my uncertainty. My uncertainty of the way you move in me. It's like a thousand symphonies intertwined, set to find a melody. We really are in the wilds of Switzerland now, aren't we? Oh, completely and totally. Yeah, we see very few people on the trails, very much just kind of by ourselves, seeing a part of Switzerland that I guess not very many people see. We ascend to the Cabin de Nid. It's really ascending. It's steep. Cabin de Nid. And just an arrow pointing upwards. Check out these switchbacks. They just keep going and going and going. We began stage eight at the Cabin de D. We first descended onto the Chelion Glacier and crossed over the ice floe to the other side. We then climbed to the Pas de Chevret, using ladders bolted to the cliffside to reach the top. 
Descending through the valley on the other side, we soon reached the town of Arola. My legs needed a break, but Nathaniel had plenty of energy, so I relaxed in Arola with some ice cream and took a bus, while Nathaniel left his pack with me, and we both completed the leg to Les Alders. walk on a glacier yeah we do this is definitely I mean that's down into it Okay. Nice work. It is slick. No problem. No real trail to be seen, but uh, just these red tipped rocks and the dots that are everywhere. There's another one further down. That's our trail. Just kind of pick your own way over this field. It's kind of freaky. It is kind of freaky. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's, it's, you have to look at the wall or you're gonna be afraid of going down the wrong way. If you climb, it just keeps on going upwards. All the way up to that sheer cliff up there. Pass the path. Next set. Up this set now. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Nathan wants to take a really pretty picture of all the food, and I'm starving right now. And having like cake and sliced bread and Swiss, like Switzerland Alpcasa cheese, 
And the smell of sausages is just killing me. <laughs> I'm laughing at and it. And he's laughing at me. Ugh. <laughs> Cheating <laughs> for just a little while. Literally, just goes flat across. So it turned out that our Airbnb was actually in uh, Lizolde and not Lesage. And so we're taking a bus this morning from Lizolde up to Lesage. Should save us how many meters climbing? Like a hundred. Like a hundred meters of climbing, which is pretty negligible. Decent. I don't think it's negligible. Okay, it, it, it saves a little. It should be a beautiful day for walking. The weather looks great. And uh, it should be pretty good. We got some breakfast, some delicious breakfast we'll eat on the trail. We began stage nine with a short bus trip from Les Aldeurs to Lesage. From Lesage, we began the 1200 meter ascent to the Col du Stade. Descending the other side, we arrived at the beautiful Lac du Chateau Pré. And rounding the lock, we began our final 400 meter ascent to the Cabane de Moiri. This roof is so old, there's lichen growing on it. <laughs> Look at that. These kids are putting me to shame. They live here, they know what they're doing. I have the weight of one of them on my back, I'm sure. <laughs> they're killing it. <laughs> It's a heck of a hill! 40% grades, I'm sure. Here we go, final steps. Sweet. Every breath holds a moment. Everyone a chance to take. You can see it if you close your eyes. We already know the way. It is. Iglesia du Moray. And up there hut where we are staying, and the weir over here.
got these uh, silt collection ponds where the water from the glacier slows down pretty significantly so the silt settles and doesn't fill in the reservoir that you can see all the way down there in that brilliant blue color. That river looks like a freaking river of Gatorade. I want to drink it. It's so blue. Come all the way from down. We will go. Wow. After enjoying the sunrise at the Cabane de Moiry, we descended back down to the Lac de Chateau Pré. Traversing the mountainside, we hiked along the brilliant blue Lac de Moiry until we were just above the Barrage de Moiry. Here we began our ascent to the Col de Saubois. After crossing the Col de Saubois, we descended the other side until we arrived at the Saubois station, where we took a tram down into Zinal. Here we go, descending into Zinal. How many switchbacks did you say? 34. All the way up, all the way down this cliff, along the ridge line, and down to the lakeside. You ready to do this? Yeah. Let's go do this.
it's bluer than the sky. I know. It's, you can see that. It's bluer than any sky I've ever seen. Bluer than anything I've ever seen. I've never seen anything this teal. This is literally a hill full of Edelweiss. Walking around and here it is, all the Edelweiss ever. On heading up. Today was mostly downhill, but man, the little 500 meter climbs, they really add up after a day like yesterday. And here we are. 2850. Way up here. And view. Spectacular. part of the descent right here. Doing something. So instead of hiking 17 kilometers in the rain, um, we're going to Sion to see some Swiss castles, actually. Yeah. So a little side trip. It's a bummer that we're not going to be able to do this leg today, but it's just the way it goes. We have to be flexible, especially with weather like this. It's pouring outside. It looks absolutely miserable. We wouldn't be able to see anything. Trails are going to be muddy. Yeah. And top it off, we're a little tired. Yeah. I'm really tired, personally. Nathan's, Nathan's probably fine. I probably would have made him carry my pack, so he appreciates this. <laughs> so let's go see some Swiss castles. Yeah, let's go see some Swiss castles, too. Due to the heavy rain forecast, we left Zeenal for Sion for some sightseeing, taking a bus to the train station, then a train to Sion. Sion is the capital of the Valère region and home to the Valère Basilica and the Château de Tourbillon, both built in the 13th century. The city is very old, and the basilica and chateau are amazing, and largely made up for our inability to hike these portions of the Haute Route. Earlier in the trip, we were informed that a large portion of the Haute Route had actually been destroyed from landslides and was impassable anyway, which was disappointing to hear, but we were fortunate that the rain happened when it did. After spending a day and a half in Sion, we went to our next book location in St. Niklaus, so we could easily spend the rest of our trip at our final destination in Zermatt.
turns out that we can get wet anywhere we want in Switzerland tomorrow. <laughs> so we went on a food hunt, and climbed up a nice large hill, and now we get to photograph these castles out here while we enjoy some pad thai. And we are enjoying it too. It's delicious. This is a really cool view with the clouds coming over in this storm across the mountains. We've got some good pictures of this. Brandon, you get the shot you want? I think so. I think I just barely did. I got you on video getting the shot. Yeah. Cool. We made it. Yeah. We are now at Matterwood. This day, every journey that brought us to this place. We're filled with water. So we've got a plan. We found uh, this really cool place, the Fluhalp, and uh, we're gonna stay in it because it's a 10 minute walk from where I want to take a picture of the Matterhorn. That gives us two chances. Two chances to try and get the sunrise picture. Couldn't be more perfect. We can stay. Nathan. Yeah. This is awesome. I think we made it. When the morning light brings us to our feet, we'll keep chasing what we were meant to be. We can feel it. We're ready for anything. This is what we Here I am this morning at the Matterhorn. It's currently uh, 5.30 in the morning, one hour to sunrise. Um, about 40, maybe 30 minutes to blue light, actually. Perfect reflection in the water. Things are looking really good. You know, God's in charge, it's not us. So this morning, God's in charge of the sunrise. And I'm here, I'm ready. I've got my camera set up, I've got my three filters next to the uh, top camera you're watching right now. That may or may not have a picture. But um, I'm here, I'm doing my part. And that's all that really matters and it's beautiful. So, it really is beautiful. So, let's hope I can get a good capture.
Looks like uh, it's finally done. I freaking sprinted down here, but uh, I think it was worth it. This sunset was really spectacular. What an amazing adventure, what an amazing trip. Um, yeah. And man, just check out where we get to finish it up at for, for the finale. Just a, a sunrise at the, at the Matterhorn. Pretty excellent. Yeah. Makes me tear up leaving. <laughs> Let's come back here and ski. Let's do. That sounds like fun.
This is who we are, and this is where it starts.